in this video, I'm going to cover a source of frustration for a lot of new users. Usually around the time somebody has assembled their machine, done the Hello World program, and even made a few cuts, they'll begin to try projects that are more and more ambitious. As the size and complexity of their project grows, they begin to realize how slow the cutting is. A project can take several hours to cut, and it can be quite frustrating and limiting, especially for somebody who only has a certain number of hours a week to dedicate to the hobby. One of the most common sources of this problem is within Carbide Create itself. The default cutting rates contained within Carbide Create are extremely conservative. This isn't a bad thing. It's definitely good for new users to start out with conservative settings that will prevent them from breaking bits or experiencing some other problems that can crop up when you start pushing your machine to its limits. But for a lot of people, they're a little too conservative, and some of those projects that take hours could realistically be done in far less time. I'm going to start by briefly covering what feeds and speeds are, and what the different parameters control, and then we're going to look at the defaults in Carbide Create. Once we've done that, we'll take a look at another program I like, GWizard Feed and Speed Calculator. This program does a lot of the math for you, and can really help you push your machine. While I definitely recommend this program to people looking to push their machines even further, you're also welcome to just use some of the numbers we come up with today when doing your own cutting. It should definitely be noted that you don't have to jump immediately to the fastest possible steps. You can incrementally increase your speeds as you gain more confidence with the machine. To start the project, I've created a simple layout with three squares. Each has been set up with a profile cut with no offset in 1 quarter, 1 eighth, and 1 16th inch bits. The stock for the project is considered to be 1 half inch hardwood, and each of the cuts is down to 3 eighths of an inch. Let's start by opening the 1 quarter inch toolpath. In the top left of the screen, we see the parameters for this toolpath. Depth per pass is the amount of vertical distance the bit will travel as it makes each pass. In this case, it's set to 0 0.092 inches. This means if we're cutting any deeper than 0 0.092 inches, the toolpath will make multiple passes descending 0 0.092 inches each pass until it reaches the bottom of the cut. The step over value isn't particularly important for our contour cuts. If we're pocketing where the bit is cutting a larger area, the bit will overlap itself as it moves. This helps give you a smooth flat bottom to your cut and make sure that nothing is missed. It's generally set around 40% of the diameter of the bit, or just under half. The feed rate is the speed at which the bit will move horizontally across the piece. Obviously, the quicker it moves, the quicker it can finish each pass and move on to the next one. The plunge rate is the speed that the bit will move vertically when it's transitioning between one pass and the next. This rate is usually much lower than the feed rate because most end mills are not made for drilling. That is to say, they're not meant for vertical movement through the stock. It can be done, and there are several techniques to deal with that, but for Carbide Create, the typical one is simply to have a much slower plunge rate, giving the bit plenty of time to cut as it moves. Finally, Carbide Create shows an RPM calculation. Its usefulness is pretty limited. The woodworking routers that we use on our CNC's are not capable of speeds such as 8,000 RPMs. Their usable range is between 10,000 and 24,000 or thereabouts depending on your model. Regardless, this setting has no effect when you're actually cutting, and it's a little more useful I believe on the Nomad. So as ShapeOko 3 users, we can more or less ignore this. Let's look at how this compares to some of the smaller bits I've used. You can see here in my 1 8 inch toolpath, our depth per pass is much lower, 0 0.028 compared to 0 0.092. We're cutting roughly three passes for every one pass we cut with a quarter inch bit. So before we've even started, we've tripled the number of passes. The step over value is once again just under half the diameter of the bit. There's actually very little reason to ever change that. And our feed rate and plunge rate have also come down quite a bit. Going from 75 down to 16, 
and 12 down to 4. Finally, we'll look at the 1 16th end mill. Here our numbers are even smaller, 0 0.008 depth per pass, and likewise our feed rate is down at 10, and our plunge rate down at less than 3. Now of course there are reasons why the 1 8th and 1 16th end mill require these slower speeds. They're far less rigid and easy to break. But that said, these settings are still extremely conservative. So now that we know what Carbide Create would like us to do, let's take a look at another program. GWizard Feed and Speed Calculator is overwhelming. Its user interface leaves a lot to be desired, but the information you need is here. It's worth taking a moment to discuss the pricing. GWizard requires a subscription, but each year you subscribe for $79 a year, you gain a lifetime license for one horsepower. So if you subscribe for one year and don't pay again, you have a lifetime subscription for up to one horsepower. After two years, two horsepower, after three, three, and so on. Because we're using relatively low power woodworking routers, down around one and a quarter, one and a half horsepower, if you merely subscribe for the software for two years, you walk away with a lifetime license to use with any CNC machine of two horsepower or less. If you spread the cost over 10, 20 years of a hobby, it becomes a lot more tolerable. So now let's look at what G-Wizard can actually tell us. Working from top to bottom, you can see I've selected the Shape Oko 3 machine, which is something built into the program. I didn't have to add that myself. I've selected hardwood, just as I'd put into Carbide Create, and we've set this to Carbide End Mills as that seems to be the most popular type of mill that people are using. Let's use GWizard to do some of the math on our quarter inch cut and see what kind of numbers we can get out of it. We're going to do a little bit of experimenting and I'll be walking you through the process in real time. I didn't do this ahead of time, so you're gonna see my thought process as I go through. So I have the tool diameter set up to one quarter of an inch, and the next important number is the cut width, which is also one quarter of an inch. This indicates that we're slotting. Slotting is any time the bit is fully engaged, meaning it's making a cut the same width as the bit. It's never clearing an area where it's only partially touching material. The bit is essentially always engaged fully in the material, cutting as it moves. This differs compared to a pocket where it will make small, ever-growing spirals, but only engaging about half the bit as it moves. So we've set our cut width to the same diameter as the bit. There's a few other numbers we can set here. We have this general slider, which controls how aggressive or conservative the cut is. I usually start around 50%, but we'll probably adjust that. I also like to run my machine at 18,000 RPMs. This is around setting two on the DeWalt and maybe a little higher on the Makita. Uh, this is the recommended RPM rate for Amana bits, and I use those a lot, so I kind of just do all my math based on that. Now, the two really useful numbers we're going to be able to get out of this are the cut depth, which is our depth per pass from Carbide Create, and our feed rate, which is simply called feed rate in Carbide Create. And these numbers are going to kind of work together. Usually at this point, what I would do is use this gauge button and get an idea of what my maximum cut depth would be. And I use that, and I do that by opening the cut optimizer and choosing this second option, optimize depth while locking width of cut. I don't have any discretion over the width of the cut as we're slotting. So this will give me the best depth I can get given that width. When I hit save, I get a few things that I need to take note of. The first one is our deflection warning. The deflection warning is a nice indicator that maybe you're putting a little too much stress on the bit. So I'm just going to back the slider off a little bit and there we go, immediately the deflection is resolved. It's accomplished that by reducing our feed rate to put less stress on the bit. Now amazingly, our cut depth is one inch. That is a very aggressive cut. It's even indicating that we are four times as deep as the diameter of the bit. Now this is where some of that tweaking comes in, and I'm going to show you how these different parameters affect each other. So for one, a cut depth of one makes no sense. I'm only cutting to three eighths of an inch. So a reduced feed rate that makes it safe for me to cut at one inch just doesn't make sense. 
let's start by reducing the cut depth to the 3 8 inch cut I intend to make. Okay, and that gives us a new warning, though this warning is not particularly concerning. I've set GWizard to never give me a feed rate over 100. It'll just max out at 100 and turn red to tell me that it's maxed out. But this is essentially saying that if I'm running a quarter inch bit, even slotting, at 18,000 RPM and 3A7 inch deep, I can go as fast as the machine can handle. That said, even this for me is a little too much. I don't like running the bits deeper than one times their diameter. So a quarter inch bit not to be run more than a quarter inch deep, an eighth inch bit not more than an eighth. I even like to back off from that a little bit as well. So I'm going to put in my own manual cut depth of 0.2 inches. This of course does mean I'll be making two passes, but given I was already able to run at 100 inches per minute and I've only backed off on the depth, two passes at essentially the fastest the machine can move is still going to be quite quick. These are the settings I would probably take into Carbide Create. 0.2 inches, which is more than double our original cut depth, and the 75 inches per minute they have as a default, I might bump up to 90 or 100 to get it closer to what I'm seeing here. I'll still be making two passes, but the original settings would have had me doing three, so I've cut off an entire pass. Obviously, the larger the area I'm cutting, the more important that speed matters. And I've increased the speed by a quarter to a third, depending on how, what kind of speeds my shape Oko can manage. So that's a quick primer on what we can do with G-Wizard. But to be honest, the quarter inch bit was actually already pretty okay. Let's see what we can do with the eighth inch bit. So we'll go up to tool diameter and reset that to 0.125 inches. Some of these numbers have automatically adjusted themselves. Down here at the deflection warning, we can definitely see why the smaller bits have to be run lower. We're exceeding our deflection limit by 400% because we didn't change any of the other numbers to match. Let's skip some of the trial and error phase that we did before. We've already discussed that I like to run my bits at just under the diameter. By reducing the cut depth, I've already taken care of about half of my deflection warning. Now I can skip to using the optimized cut and choosing to optimize the feed rate. And pressing OK. Now I am noticing that it has decided to ignore my preference for an 18,000 RPM spindle speed. Go ahead and put that back. And we're going to bring down the aggressiveness until we've taken care of this deflection warning. You'll, you'll actually notice a curiosity. When I go too low, the rate actually goes up. Once I find a number that's fairly low, I then fix it just by editing the feed rate. By slowly bringing it down five or 10 at a time. Eventually I can get the feed rate low enough to avoid the red. So let's look at how this compares. Our original feed rate was around 16 inches per minute, so we've already doubled that. But far more importantly, our cut depth was 0 0.028. We've more than tripled that, cutting the number of passes to one third of what it originally would have been. That means this cut with these settings would be around six times faster. So now imagine an hour long project being cut in 10 minutes. So let's do one final setup for our 1 16th inch bit. We'll enter our diameter as 0 0.0625. We'll unlock our inches per minute. We'll enter our cut depth as 0 0.05. Backing slightly off the diameter of the bit. And we'll reduce our feed rate to eliminate our deflection warning. Our feed rate is all the way down at one and a quarter inches per minute. The 0 0.05 cut depth is far better than the 0 0.008. The reality is a 1 16th inch bit starts to get to the area where you really only want to do shallow engravings. If we use the small end mill to only make a shallow 0 0.02 inch cut, our feed rate can go up around three or a little higher, which is a little more tolerable as long as you're engraving something small. The smaller the bit, the more I can start to consider upping the RPMs. And just so you understand the difference it can make, 
Let's unlock the RPMs, allow them to go to 24,000, and then see how quickly we can move the bit. So not a huge increase, and the wear and tear on our router and the brushes by going to maximum RPMs is, for me, just not worth it. So in summary, on the left I have the carbide create defaults, and on the right, the numbers we got out of GWizard. I want to stress again, you don't have to immediately change all your numbers to be these just because some software told you to. Choose a number somewhere between Carbide Create's defaults and the numbers shown here and see how your machine behaves. If you have problems, turn the numbers down. If everything is going well and you're enjoying the faster cutting times, push them a little more. And don't be afraid to go a little bit beyond these parameters as well. While calculators can give you general ideas, people in production shops often just do tests. They just look at the surface finish after a cut, see if it's quality. They look for deflection by seeing if parts fit together or if a tool is wearing prematurely. It's not an exact science and these tools can only take you so far. Regardless, the defaults with Carbide Create are extremely conservative. There's no reason to spend hours waiting for a project that could be done in minutes. I would definitely consider at least subscribing to GWizard for two years to get your lifetime license. The software has saved me countless hours by giving me reasonable estimates to start my cuts at. Even as I tweak the cutting speeds of projects, it's nice to have an objective reference point to refer back to. Thank you for watching, and as always, I hope you found something in this video useful. If you did, please consider liking the video, and if you'd like to see more content like this from me, please consider subscribing to my channel. Especially in the early days of a channel, every like and every subscription is really helpful. If you have any questions about how to use GWizard, or have any questions about feeds and speeds in general, please ask in the comments below.